Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream on Thursday, as we always do. Glad to have you with us. Um, we have a new guest today, again, uh, but this one is special. This one is um, uh, known by a lot of Ajax fans, um, especially Ajax fans abroad. Uh, Damien, welcome. Um, we've been trying to get you on the channel for quite some time. We're very delighted to have you on the show. We wish it would be under different circumstances, but still, it doesn't exclude you from the fact that you have a very strong opinion about what's happening. And people, and me, and everybody else, Papi Mento, Gary, we really want to hear what you think of, our, of everything that's going on right now. So welcome again. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate this. And uh, yeah, it should have been sooner, but you know, life gets in the way. Perfect. Um, Gary, always nice to have you, man. Um, welcome. Papi, you too. Thank you. Thanks for having me, bro. Okay, so you guys know the tradition. We have a lot to talk about today. Um, unfortunately, it will not be a lot about football and triangles and nice goals and these kind of things, which is what we want. It will be a little bit more about what's going on, management, structure, our, uh, our coach, you know, still here. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Damien, um, <clears throat> I want to go uh, to you first because, uh, of course, you're a new guest. First time on the channel, and you're an Ajax fan, and uh, we want to know how you became an Ajax fan. Well, um, yeah, like everybody, I was enchanted by the uh, European Cup winning side, you know, that uh, sort of broke up the monopoly of football at the time, found that really interesting. And I'm a Sunderland fan by birth, so uh, I am, um, and, and of course, the Stadium Flight and the Amsterdam Arena are the same stadium. And when uh, they opened up the Stadium Flight, the first team that played there in a friendly was Ajax. And it was the team after that they'd won the European Cup. They beat Sunderland 3-0. And uh, the level was high. And uh, after that, uh, the rest was history. And I, um, I've been a season ticket holder now since the 2008 season. Oh. So, um, yeah, so I've been there, seen sort of the, the, the Louis van Gaal years and up to, uh, up to now. So I've seen it. Uh, I've seen a bit. I've seen it all. I, I haven't said I've seen it all, but you, you, <laughs> I've seen the lows, the lows, the highs, and then and then now the depths of hell. So yeah, I've seen uh, <laughs> the depths of hell. Yeah. Right. So your experience, you know what you know, you have been there before. You know, you know what's going on because we had some lows before, some highs, and everything. So that's good. Um, let's start with you. I just want to ask you a question, right? Um, let me be as blunt as possible. Very Dutch of me. Sorry I for that. As long as possible in return, yeah. Yeah. Um, why is Stang still our coach? Why hasn't he been, been sacked? Um, I think it's because if you if you really look at it and you take the emotion out of it, actually he's not the problem. He's not the solution, but he's not the problem. And I remember there were some discussions previously where I everybody wanted the manager out and I wanted the, I wanted Sven out, I wanted Mislintat out. Um, I really took my time to analyze the situation and I realized that Stein is not an Ajax manager. He's, he's, he stumbled into Ajax and he can't believe where he is. He's like, this is the, the, the even though it's terrible, this is the highlight of his career, right? He's, he shouldn't be here. It's a big mistake, but that's a symptom of what's happened above. And even if you look at Sven, which was totally the wrong appointment, he was given a remit to close the wage bill down, uh, do certain things. And the more you look at it and the more the emotion comes out of it and the more the acceptance of that we are really in it, you realise that Stein is just a big part player. And actually, if you've got some sensible heads coming back to the club, uh, in, in like Van Gaal and other people, I'd rather have two or three more games where we muddle along as we are and give them time to make a plan and to agree, and then to appoint somebody who is coming in and is going to bring that IX DNA back that people are talking about, or at least get us back to where we think we should be. And I just see he's irrelevant. He's irrelevant. He's as irrelevant as the day he arrived, the day he was appointed, and he's he'll be irrelevant when he's gone. And he'll be somebody like Voldemort that we'll just speak about in wisp tones when when we're when we've won the European Cup again. Um, and we're playing in the finals of the Champions League, we'll laugh about how bad it was and tell our grandchildren. 
So enjoy the moment. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's very interesting points. I will come back to that in a bit. Um, Gary, uh, I want to ask you something. We've been talking mm. off as well a couple of times, and um, you can, of course, express your opinion about Stein, but also uh, you told me like you're not very optimistic uh, looking at the players that we have or the players that we signed. Do you still stand by that? Uh, yeah, Gary? massively. Yeah, massively. I there's a couple of players that we always talk about privately on on the videos of Hato. You know, just I just don't think they're any good. You know, I know confidence is massive. You know, I'm, I've always said that since I've met you guys. Football for me is all about confidence. Like we are at our workplace as well. But if you haven't got it, you need to get a pick me up and feel good about yourselves. But I've, you know, I've seen every single game this season. I've watched it live. I just don't think they're good enough. The quality. There's a couple there. Right, like Forbes has done really well the last couple of games. He's trying hard. Hato, obviously, but he's a kid, you know, he's younger than my stepdaughter, you know, it's just, we're relying too heavily on that. And um, yeah, for me, I look at it all collectively and I just coach or not, things will get a bit better but with the current team, man. They're just, for me, we've rushed. We're not, we're not um, attracting the, the players we want anyway. So have we got a choice of who we've had to buy as well, to be fair, you know, but but sure, any game surely, we play now, I'm just not. I'm not confident at all in any game we play. Yeah, look, I understand that you know um, the most. How do you say it? Like uh, the most tangible thing you can do is look at what's happening on the field, right? So you, yeah. you judge the players and you look at what the players are doing. But at the same time, you're not going to tell me, Gary, that the, the squad quality that we have is reflect uh, reflected on the on the league table right now, right? Do you think we doesn't are the 16th best team in the league in the Eredivisie? It doesn't lie. We haven't scored enough. We've lost loads. I mean, we had a couple of bad luck with the games being called off and whatnot. But it's one, we're not good enough, man. Honestly, I know Fine Order are a good team, but watching that game two or three weeks ago live, it was like just we opened up, man. And just it was embarrassing. And listen, we're all emotional. I've not been on here for a while as well, so I haven't really expressed it to you guys unless we've been chatting privately. But I do not. Other than Forbes and Hato, and Brobby's done really well. I've really enjoyed Brobby the last two or three games. His hold-up play, I mean, his finishing is <laughs> terrible. Um, but he's trying. But what I'm trying to get at is that, despite new manager or not, new squad or not, these players, for me, individually, haven't got the quality I feel we need. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. You know? All right, uh, Papi, I want to go to you. Before you can react, Damien, um, Papi, I want to go to you, right? So we saw the game against AZ. We're not going to talk about the game. I don't want to talk about the game. Let's just forget it. It was a very bad game. But I want to highlight a little bit what happened afterwards with the press conference, especially what Stan was saying. There were some really interesting post-match comments from him. Um, what did you make of it, of, of certain things that he said? Um, as Damien said, uh, a bad coach, first of all. Uh, second of all, blaming uh, everything and everyone except the real problem, and that's him. Um, uh, you know, Gary is talking about quality, but if you uh, are now, what, two months in and I still don't see the hand of, uh, of Stein, nobody got better under Stein, then you have to question uh, if he's a coach that makes player better or a coach that can structure a team in, in, in such a terrible situation we are at. Look, any any coach that would come in have, would have problems, but not this long, and you would see at least the hand of a coach, the structure he wants to play, the idea. But every game I see different players, I see different tactics, I see different way of playing, I see um, uh, players that don't understand what they're doing, so you're not going to tell me that's only the quality of the players because that's something I cannot get behind. Put Bus in front of this group and we're playing a whole different tactic and a whole different structure. So that for me is it's completely Stein's fault. Uh, do we lack quality? Yes, we don't have anything of Kurus's quality or Anthony or Licha yet. Maybe Sutalo or um, the other players that came in need time to, to get in. But the most worrisome thing is all the complaints, Juan, the complaints are about the players that come in. But for me, the biggest problem is the players that were bought last year. And one of them is a captain. 
and he's not captain material. So he's the one that should um, elevate the level of the team. He's not. And then people are going to tell me, yeah, but he's better as a supporting role. What the hell are we buying a top top buy? The, the highest transfer in is him. And then you're talking about supporting role? I'll get the hell out of here. I'm sorry. I cannot, I cannot comprehend that. And that makes me pissed. Because these are the Dutch players we're talking about. These are the, the IX DNA they want in. They don't talk about them. They talk only about what Sven did. But I'm not. I don't think that Sven is only to blame here. All right, um, Damien, uh, Gary, you guys want to react to Popimento? That was quite a rant, to be honest. I didn't expect. Uh, yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to make it clear that I'm not blaming just the quality. You know, I'm not a lover of the coach, um, Puppy, at all. You know, Sven. I told you guys in the summer. I watched him at Arsenal, and the previous clubs. I wasn't a lover of him. So the whole the whole thing's in disarray. From the coach to the players, but I'm talking about even a boss there or even a better, better manager. I still feel these players, for me, won't they will improve obviously, but they're not great quality. That's what yeah. I'm getting at. And then, and I'm sorry, Damien, I just want to continue what with was? this. And then they say, let us focus on youth. But what if in the youth, the level is not up to par to make our whole team out of the youth? Then you have to buy. And Ajax has always yeah. been. If we don't have it, we buy. And the last couple of years, I mean, Timber came out of the youth. Um, uh, we have Hato now. We have Amoricho coming up. We have a lot of uh, talents coming up. But you also have some talents that are getting chances because they're youth that are not up to snuff, not up to the level that we want. Taylor is one of them. Wrench has been one of them. Mm -hmm. Even though they're both young, Juan, panels, even though they're both young, they are not young in the amount of minutes they have played for Ajax so far. And in that case, you would have to see more progression than what we're seeing now. And that's not the case. So don't please don't give me the argument that it's only the foreign players because it's not. That premise is gone. It's all of them. And, but, yeah, and I also believe they don't actually like the coach either. I don't think they yeah. enjoy playing yeah, at all. You can see it, it's obvious. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. Uh, there's a disconnection. You can feel there's a disconnection between staying and the players mostly not i don't even know if it's only the foreign players because to be honest i've seen now a couple of post-match interviews one of bergwijn last sunday but also berghuis after athens um which was a little bit i don't know how you would interpret these kind of uh, things but they were saying like yeah i don't have an opinion about staying you should ask him or stuff like that just paraphrasing here um i just wanted to go back to what you said papimento and then damien you can jump in right ahead um, one thing, though, that you should blame uh, a sporting director, like Sven, for instance, is if he should, he should evaluate, he should assess the current state of the, of the team. So when he came in, he should have known, okay, what's the current quality of the team? What do we have in the youth? All right. And which players are we going to get? And at the end of the day, although it's very short time because he came in and he had to fix everything in a few months, that is difficult, I'll be honest. But still, he's responsible for the end quality that he delivers and gives to the coach, right? And of course, the coach, I'm not saying I'm not defending Stein, I'm just saying the quality of the team, the squad quality, the balance, all these kind of things, that's the responsibility of the sporting director. Do you think he did well in that in that sense? With with the Damien, you want no, to no, react you go, to this? You go. No, you're, you're, uh, no, 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 because I, I just want to say he, he received some goals that he had to make sure that he hit them, right? So he had to lower contracts because we're not in the Champions League anymore. He had to rebuild a whole team, which is not easy. And he had to sell before he could buy Kudus, Alvarez, and Timber. Let's please, let's not forget that. And Stein hasn't won anything since Kudus left. And Ajax has never been the case that we buy one-on-one -on -one quality back. So we sell Kudus, nothing of that quality will come back. No way. So or you are more careful with just selling, or you are better in preparing yourself for when players leave, you already have certain youth or certain players on the bench that have been with you for six months, a year, adapted to the style, and that can be implemented from there. But it can't be that in one transfer window, you let go of all your star players and there's nothing behind it. Everything is new and uh, you just fall so so low. If, go ahead. If you, look, 
if you look at the long, if you look at it through the long lens, right? So in our current situation where we are now, and I'll work backwards a little bit, our current situation where we are now, I think we've got to give all the youth a pass. And the reason for that is the youth will only develop in a situation that's stable. And it's very, very unstable. So whatever you think about heart or whatever you think about, I don't think they lack the efforts. And I think that they do apply themselves, but the leadership is, is there. What formation are we actually playing? Because I know he's, I know he's putting 4 4, four, four three out, but we're not playing 4-4-3. Four, four, Something four, like 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah. yeah. It's it's weird, this long ball situation. We don't have a midfield if you're going to play the long ball. And I get it because Broby is, is chomping at the bit. I mean, you, I, I sort of break it up into two ways. You've got efforts and you've got lack of talent, right? And I, and I think you've got some people who are in the middle. If you look at our current our current team, I agree with uh, Papi 100%. I think Bergwijn is more of a problem than a lot of people think because he's supposed to be the leader. He's trying to do everything. He's just not that good. He's just not that good. And, of course, at Spurs, he looked okay, but he had a very, lot of very good players around him. Taylor works really hard, really hard. Whether he's got it or whether he's not, he's not our worst player. Um, Wrench, terrible. I mean, horrendous. You've got to go back another season. We didn't. We haven't had stability for, for, for a whole season last year under Schroeder. We didn't replace Mazarui. As a, a you know, we 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 didn't replace Graverberg really as as a centre midfielder, so you, you've got to go back a couple of seasons and see where it has where we haven't been replaced. Sven's gone out and he's bought these bargain basement budget players. Tahirovic is not an Ajax player. You can tell by the way he moves, the way he runs around. He's quick. He's an athlete, but he's a he's a League One Championship UK footballer. Um, well, Damien, Sotilo Mourinho is, doesn't get rid of players for no reason, man, does he? Let's be honest with Tahirovic. Yeah, Mourinho he's, doesn't sell he's many players, right? Um, and, and you look at sort of like uh, the, the Georgian guy, Miko uh, Mika Tadze. Mika, yeah. He's got some potential. Forbes has got some potential. But they need players around them, stable, who are going to put their foot on the ball, calm things down. And that's what we don't. We lack leaders on the pitch. I think the big mistake was letting Daley Blind go. He was a leader on the pitch. Is letting um, what's it called? Um, um, Tadic, Tadic go, yeah, as well. I mean, that's a big statement, right? If we had Tadic there now in 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 the trenches, we would be fourth or fifth because everybody goes around him. You you took a big spine out of that team and you've not replaced it. And we're asking a lot of these players, which is one of the reasons why um, Forbes is Forbes looks really good. He's exciting as a player. He. he He's every every I put him in any other Ajax team and he improves. He, he stops running with his head down. He starts looking up. He starts getting the ball. You can work on him. Um, but this, but everybody else, they're yeah, very average. Satulo, he looks good, but everybody's out of position. He's constantly trying to cover for the left back and the right back. Harto's not going to grow in that position. Actually, I, I think the keeper's done quite well this season, considering who's playing in front of him and how we how much we were worried about him. So in, in, in he saved my, us a few times, Damien. Yeah, he has. And I think he's, he's gone under the radar just how well he's done and how mature he looks. Because if you'd asked me last season, Gorta, disaster. This season, he's not, he's not my worry. I, I just don't see the formation they're playing. And I think until that is organised, and we know how we're playing and what people's roles are, I, I don't think we can answer that question. Uh, I just want to react uh, to uh, Damien on a couple of things. First of all, when he says don't blame all the youth, which youth are we talking about? I mean, Vos don't get blamed. Hato is not getting blamed. No. But when you talk about Hat, when you talk about Taylor and Wrench, I think you should see him as a senior player in this team and not anymore as a youth. I think you can they blame ha- they s- Yeah, but they saw how it is to play under Ten Hag. They saw the level they have to bring to play on that level. And they're not bringing that at the moment, Damien. So you cannot say on all youth, we cannot blame them. No, certain youth have much more experience and you expect them to get to a higher level. And we haven't been seeing that. So you may be critical critical about those players. Yeah, I mean, they are 20, right? So it's it's still... And, and if you compare, if you look at last season, last season, nobody improved last season. So that they were 19. I think, I think you've got to give them a chance... 
Wrench, I think, is all at sea. He's really all at sea. He looks the worst out of them all. Taylor's really... And also, Wrench doesn't look interested. Taylor looks at least interested. looks like he really cares. Um, so I, I kind of disagree, but respectfully, of course, disagree with you on, on that. I, yeah, but you, I, if, if you go back to the game of AZ and you check the spaces left behind by Taylor, yeah, you would yeah. talk differently to me. Yeah, right and, and I think offensively, or with the ball, Taylor is okay. Without the ball, uh, the last couple of games, he's been terrible. But that's the whole team. So you would consider him only as a 10, not as an 8, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, yeah. I mean, I would try... The effort, I would put him in different in different position. I would maybe put him right back, left back, try him. He can tackle. He can run. He's got to be better than what we have at the moment. But yeah, his position but Damian, awareness Damian, how is... Are you how are you going to put somebody like Taylor in a, in a, in a fullback position uh, while he has difficulty tracking back and doing his defensive duties in the first place? I think he gets distracted because he's trying to win the game. And and to be honest with you, that's what Bergwijn does. I mean, if you look at it, Bergwijn is the guy, he's the, he's the free-roaming man. He's everywhere, but he's nowhere. And he's leaving all gaps up front. And, we, and, and I tell you what, another player we miss as well, Klaassen. The experience of Klaassen coming in. I know you look. I love Klaassen. You guys don't. I don't care because I'm right. No, no, I so, don't. They, no, I, do. I don't. Puppy doesn't I love like him. him. I think he's yeah. fantastic. Right? Look, look at the World Cup. He caught. He came on in the World Cup. He, he knew exactly where to stand. He comes on. He scores. He settles the team down. He's off the ball. Work is fantastic. He's a really good player. He's a lot better than what we have now. A lot better. We there's nobody. But Damien, sorry, sorry. There's Go nobody we've brought in, and let me finish this off by saying, there's nobody we've brought in who I realistically see as a replacement. Forbes is not a replacement for Tadic. You know, that I, I, I'd be interested to see who you guys think is a replacement for who. But nobody well, coming in is a replacement. What I was going to say, boys, what I was going to say about how I feel about this team, and Taylor, the last couple of games, has showed some real passion for me. Um, yeah. you know, when he's been off the ball, he's getting really angry with himself that it's not going his way. But how I feel about Sven and Tadic and all that lot going, I feel at the moment, bar a couple of players on that team, they all just can't wait to get away from the club. That's how I feel at the moment. You know, they want to run away um, and, and do not want to take any responsibility. That's how I feel about Tadic. I know he did, I know Sven drove him out anyway, but this current crop of, you call them, I, I think they, I agree with Puppy. I think we can't class them as youth anymore. Wrench, you know, and Taylor, for me, they're the senior players that should be taking this crop of the neck. And for me, other than Taylor, the rest of them just want to run away. Okay, I see it a bit different, but okay, that's fine. Um, I just, I just want to react quickly, Puppy, before you go. I want to react to Damien. Um, he said something interesting about you know, you're, you're, you're um, coming back to all these players that meant a lot and were leaders uh, on and off the pitch, like Tadic, Blind, Klasa. Let me go with those three names. But let's be honest as well. There was criticism about their contribution on the field last year as well. I know it was under Schroeder, but they had poor performances as well. So, and let's be honest as well, all three of them were declining in terms of their output. We have to be honest about that. As much as we love them, as much as they uh, were important for Ajax, they were declining. And I don't think either one of them, to be honest, that's the impression I get. This I, I'm not sure, of course, but I never got the impression that they would except being more a leader and also sometimes being on the bench. And that's a problem you have to deal with as an Ajax, as a club as well, because they want to play every game. At what time do you cut the court and you say, now is the time to say goodbye and get somebody else? And when you get somebody else, who should that player be? Like, for instance, an example. I know it's not the best example, but we got Forbes. While people are arguing, we could have get, uh, got Noah Lung, for instance. Would that have been a better player no. as a replacement for Tadic, for instance? Although the timing was not the same, I know it couldn't uh, be the same um, at the same time because Noah Lung was, was basically signed early uh, and we were a little bit late in the summer to sign somebody, but still. No. And I think, to be honest with you, you need that crossover. Look at the De Boer years, right? Because you, you sent me the questions earlier on. I was thinking about it a little bit. Yeah. I'll give you one example, right? Christian Paulson came in. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, what's going on? You know, he came in and then 
Paulson had his effect on the team. He was a bit slow, but he kept the ball. Ericsson learned from Paulson. Klaassen learned from Ericsson. And there was this ongoing thing that was happening. Players were coming in. You even had a situation where, um, I can't remember, the, the um, Rick Huntelaar, for example, he was brought back. And a lot of players rubbed off on him. You know, he was in the right situation. Like maybe we used him a little bit more than we should have done uh, to, towards the end. But he was brought in for a reason. And a lot of players looked at Huntelaar and said, I want to be like him. All of a sudden, we get rid of players. And we've got no one to be there. Out, basically, the leader now is Bergwijn, who isn't good enough and can't even look after himself. And you can, you can probably question what's gone wrong with Bergwijn. And this is maybe one of the reasons why I think you've got to be very careful about the character of the player that you bring back. I don't think Davy Clarkson's character is in question, but I do question Bergwijn's character. I do question his. I do question whether he's really going to lift everybody up. Is he going to be that inspirational leader that, that, that we need? And you need to have a plan with that when you bring someone back. Who who are they going to bring through? Like now with Harto, um, you, you would bring back a centre half who really knows what he's doing. Alderweireld or something. Six months. You know, it's. I know it's a. It's a. It's a. I know. I know. It's a bad example, but stranger things. You know. Yeah. Um, does anyone want to react? I want to go to the comments quickly because there are a lot of comments okay. coming in. So let's uh, get that um, done, and then I want to move to the next topic, which is important. It's a little bit related to. Look, we're looking back right now. We're looking at what we have right now. We're looking at what happened, how we got to the situation. I want to also touch a little bit after this. After I look at the comments, like. Um, one of the things you hear all the time, and it's not the first time we've heard it, I mean, ever, ever since you're an Ajax fan, uh, if you hear pundits, old Ajax players, they always talk about Ajax DNA, which is also the main topic of today. I want to deep dive a little bit on what does it mean to have Ajax DNA in this club? Um, how should we look at it? And also, I want the viewers um, to drop a comment like how they see it and um, do they... Who do they consider an Ajax DNA? Is Ajax DNA players that are on the field, or is Ajax DNA the people that are in the board, management, etc.? And how how do you give them a sticker and say, okay, this is an Ajax DNA person, and this is the type of person we want to lead us in the future, right? So let me go to the topics quickly. If you guys want to react to one of the comments, let me know. All right, but I'm gonna try to go quickly on those, so we still have time. Um, let me see. All right. So the first couple of uh, comments are uh, stand out, which is uh, which is clear. Of course, um, I agree. Of course. Uh, okay. So here, uh, there's also humor involved. Um, while we're here worrying and thinking what we should do, um, Stan went to went to another trip, uh, Ibiza trip, allegedly. Or not? I don't know if that's has been. Preferred. I think it was on the IX site, even. So yeah, really, uh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, then uh, Fidio Yoyo is saying, uh, um, reacting to Justin DeLeo, I'm afraid it will take a decade to get back to the top. Wow. Oof, that's, that's harsh. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, then we have uh, Klauk saying, Mikotauza scored four times against Thailand, though. I actually shared it with, uh, with Gary, and he laughed. He said, yeah, but it's Thailand. That was your reaction, right? With a smile. True. Very true. Uh, <laughs> let me see. What else? Um, we have a question, actually, for you guys. Christian is saying, gentlemen, do you guys think Fahal has given Stein the ideal way to play with this group? Um, so I think just to give a little bit more context, there was talk about they would have a sit-down this week, coffee, talk about and share thoughts. I don't know if that has happened yet. Maybe so. Um so what do you guys have to say about this question? Do you guys think Fahal is going to imp uh, give a little bit more guidance on how to play and these kind of things to Stan? I think he's going to give him a chance, but we all know the level of Stan, so I'm not sure he's going to be capable of implementing what uh, Fahal wants. Um, Juan, I think he, Louis Fahal is just buying time. Because I cannot believe that after watching the AZ game, he thinks Stan has it. I'm sorry, but even he was looking mad, bro, after the after the game. Isn't that his normal be... expression, to be honest? Or I don't, do I don't know. I've never seen him that angry. It's been a while. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you can look at Feyenoord and AZ as Van Gaal and think Stein is a good coach 
and that he deserves another chance. So for me, I think there's another agenda. They're waiting maybe yeah. for December or something to to find the proper replacement. And um, the and problem this, is also yeah. yeah. The problem is also uh, there was a, there was an article from Alchemin Dachbrot uh, right after the game on Sunday, and they basically said that. Uh, it's unlikely, let me put it this way, it's unlikely that Stein will leave uh, and he will be the coach after the international break still. And the reason for that being that there's no, uh, there are two reasons, mainly two reasons. First of all, who's going to fire him? That's one. And second of all, who should succeed him? That's two, right? The timing uh, is well, on both. Jan van Halst has every right as no. a temporary... No, no, because he doesn't have the power uh, to do so. He's not a normal uh, CEO that has the power to fire somebody, I think, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I can be corrected on my, about this. But also, the other reason is being told is um, Van Halst is also leaving already. He already communicated he's leaving. So he's not going to make a decision, uh, uh, like this kind of decision, while he's leaving in a few months. You understand what I mean? So that, that was brought as an argument as well. So what's the point of being there then, if you're not going to make decisions? I don't That's understand. Yeah. Go ahead, Demi. You wanted to react? No, I, I mean, I think I agree. I think I think uh, Van Gaal's come in and he's looking at it and going, "It's a mess." And I'll go back to it. You, you've got to you've got to have a manager who everybody backs, and unless he's got somebody directly in line for it, I think he would be looking to make one or two appointments. I wouldn't rule out having Overmars back. The problem, the problem with that, uh, because I've heard that a couple of times also on X on Twitter. Um, let's take away what he did and whether it would be a good idea to get him back um, at Ajax. Put that aside for a bit. The problem is also his, his health is not the same. Um, that's the thing. His heart condition is not the same as it was. So I don't think it's a. I mean, it's up to him, of course, but I don't think that's feasible uh, to, to do, to be honest. I can imagine driving every day to um, Antwerp or every three days to Antwerp or, you know, driving from Barnefeld to to, uh, to to the arena is probably, to what he knows, is probably easier, you know, um, people around him. He's done a great job at Antwerp. It just goes to show, like, things haven't gone right since he's, he's, since he's gone. Uh, it would be... Yeah, but yeah, if it's just somebody who looks at the squad and, and writes a plan with Louis van Gaal and somebody else then implements it. So actually... Yeah, we, won't, we won't see Overmars... Sorry. Sorry. No, go I ahead, we'll see ahead. Overmars back. No, or, or, forget, forget the van der Sars and the Overmars. These, these days are gone. But what I think I'm seeing and what I'm seeing in the, in the last week or so is what van Gaal wants to bring back is what we built under the trio of Ten Hag, van der Sar, um, and over Mars and that type of feel good factor. That's what I think. And the talk of today was um, Blind as well coming back as well. You know that that's what I think they want to do is bring the, that trio of Ajax DNA which we're, we're leading to, and that feel good factor back into the club. But I don't in this current climate we live in, over Mars, forget it. Not just health reasons, but for what happened to him. What in, in the world the climate we live in now, he's not coming back. But I think Van Hal wants to and bring Ajax back also the type a... of leadership we had. I saw also a traded company, right? Can they just yeah. make that decision when something like this happened? I, I'm not sure. It's a more, it's a bit more yeah, sensitive, I would assume. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's my thought, and I think they're going to try and bring back what the trio we had with new people, with the existing past of Ajax, and try and bring back the first thing to win the fans back. Let's be honest, we're so disconnected from our club as well at the moment, and um, that's where I think we're heading with Van Hal. I think he'll stay a bit longer than he says. So, yeah, nah. yes. um, so what would happen with a publicly traded club? It wouldn't necessarily be about uh, bringing him back. They would only have to um, uh, alert the stock market when they change the structure. So, for example, if they're recruiting for the role, it wouldn't really matter. I mean, he he, he quit, but he wasn't fired. So no, the, was thing is, the thing is, Damien, sorry to interrupt you. The thing is, it will also have... And, uh, it might it might have a negative effect on the stakeholders as well. So we're not talking about only football related matters. We're talking about sponsors. We're talking about all these kind of things. You're running a risk in that area uh, as well. 
So it's much bigger, like Gary alluded to, it's much bigger than just getting him back and just talking about football and these kind of things. And, and the woman work. affected might still work at Ajax. Might not be such a great situation to be in. I would rather have Overmars back um, and the sponsors crying than be 16th. So it's just my, uh, you know, controversial, but, you know, um, well, I mean, but I do, I do think they're going to look at leadership positions before they look at the manager. So I can think we can expect him to be there for two weeks. He's gone on holiday. No, he's going to get sacked in two weeks' time. There's no coming back from this for him. We are we are going to talk about the the you know like um, the leadership, Hal, Blint, all these things that we discussed. We'll come back to that, and we're going to connect it a little bit with the Ajax DNA. Just let me finish the comments quickly. Um, so I had uh, C1 is saying uh, um, if we sex Stan, who should get into uh, into this uh, mess basically to fix it. So we'll talk about that maybe as well. Uh, Angelo, uh, I agree with Gary. Need some experienced players to come in to help build and support players and give confidence to the team. Uh, and Angelo is also saying uh, good evening to Damien. Good evening, Angelo. Uh, Justin is uh, also saying my opinion, as outlandish as it is, I would like to see Hansi Flick given the role. He has a champion's uh, pedigree. And truthfully, him being unemployed gives Ice a real chance to say, they are serious, all right? People are already starting to think ahead, right? About who's going to succeed uh, Stang. Uh, but he's not Dutch, though. I'm sorry? But he's not Dutch. Yeah, we'll come to that uh, maybe with the Ajax DNA as well. Um, yeah, so Gamble Studios doesn't fully agree in the sense that the new players, according to him, are worse than Bergwijn uh, because they're foreigners. foreigners. Uh, oh, so he's actually saying what you're saying. Sorry, I misinterpreted that sentence. So basically, he's saying what Papi was saying. Sorry. All right. Thanks, Gamble Studios. Um, Clark is saying Papi's right. We don't need a passive captain right now. Uh, people are saying agree. Agree, Papi. Agree completely. Um, scrolling Everyone down. Loves Sorry? Everyone loves Papi. Everybody Everyone loves Papi. Angelo saying strong leadership uh, needed. It... it um, yeah, somebody who would come and uh, lead this team. Absolutely. And also somebody thanking you. Too bad, Sven. <laughs> Damien, thanks for giving love to Klasse. Underestimated player indeed. All right. Klasse, he should be there player. now. And he should be there now and captain for this year, in my opinion. I know, Papi, don't look at me, but he should have stayed and been captain for this season. Simple as that. No, no, I disagree. And if you want to have the discussion, I will start right now. Oh, no. No, 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 let's not. Let's move no, on. No, no because <laughs> just, just this one, just this one. Klasa is also much better in a structured team. This team is not structured. He will not be the guy that will structure this team. So Klasa overperforms when the team is structured and he gets a lot of crosses in the box and, and opportunities. But he's not going to help you with the buildup. He's not going to help you play a better Ajax game. He should be off the ball till the box. That's Klaas. Well, okay. And the structure of Ajax now is not as great that Klaas could make a difference. That but, Papi, but Papi, Fair you're enough. also contradicting yourself a little bit because which player... No, I'm not. Can do, no, no, hold on. Which player can do well if there's no structure? Yeah. No, I mean, there are players that... Kudus is a player that without a structure, he can create something. Klaas is not... Oh, that that's what you mean. Okay, all right. I understand now. Uh, talking about Kudus... Um, we have Murder Inc. saying Kudus fitted with Stan's long ball playing style. Uh, Kudus was taking 1 1 dribbles, but now it seems Forbes can only do that, but no teammate shows support for pass uh, to score. So and I've got a, I've got a theory on this. Uh -huh. I think Forbes is too fast for the team. They can't keep up with him. He He's honestly like Broby is the only one which seems to constantly be in the wrong position. Forbes is really quick. Like it, it, there was a couple of times he did some runs in the um, final, the final game, and Bergwijn couldn't keep up with him. But the, the the truth is, and it's a bit of a side thing. I think a lot of players are not fit. Really? I, I, honestly, you see a lot of players blown out of their their backside. You know, of course, look at me. You know, I'm the, I'm like the peak of physical fitness. This is a male physical phys physique. But I, I honestly think a lot of the players do not look fit. And one thing, one thing about the Feyenoord team, about uh, Null Twenty, they look fit. They look fit and they look fast. Ten Hag's players at Ajax looked fit. I, I, I always thought that um, 
I always thought that the um, the, the players under um, what's, uh, what's he called? Hag? No. Um, Hag? Damien? No, no the, before. For the uh, boss, uh, Marcel Kaiser. Boss. Kaiser. I think the players lost a lot of fitness under Kaiser. Uh, was it was a boss then Kaiser or Kaiser then boss? No, boss, boss Kaiser, Kaiser boss. then Hag. Yeah, yeah and I think the players lost a lot of, and it reminds me a little bit of that at the moment. They just don't look fit. Um, they don't. I don't, I don't agree. I, I honestly don't agree with that and the premise and the reason for that being uh, that's my uh, interpretation. The way that we're playing requires a lot of fitness, and uh, to me, it's amazing that you still see, like in the 80th minute, you see like Groby still pressing high, uh, players pressing high. The problem is that we are our pitch, like the, the field is too large. The back line is playing like 60 meters, 70 meters behind the forward line, and there's a big gap in between. These players have to run back and forth like crazy, which is also what Berfein said after the uh, Athens game, that this is not su supposed to be like this. I think they're very fit. I think they're just drowning because of the playing style and the la lack of structure. And not only that. Yeah, even, yeah you're right. You're right. Even Stang, even Stang, after the match against Azet, was complimenting the spirit of the group because Bergwijn tracked in the 89th minute to defend the ball uh, against AZ. So I don't think it's fitness, to be honest, but that's my opinion. Well, they look... They, I, well, I agree with you. Maybe in the system, they don't look fit, but I, I, I don't know. They, to me, they look fitter under Ten Hag. It's because of the gaps, Damien. That's all it is. You know, one minute we're up that side of the pitch and the next, you know, we've got counter attacked and with the centre by themselves and a big gap in the middle, so we look slow. But again, it's for me. It's, and we had and we had that players tactic. that could hold yeah. the ball, Damien. We had players yeah. under Ten Hag that could hold the ball. You know, Tadic, Anthony, uh, Mazraoui, uh, Blind. Uh, you know, nobody in this team can hold the ball as comfortably. They always lose it in uh, bad yeah. places on the pitch. That's going to make your play and the way the team plays. Uh, Totally different than what you expect. I would say probably every goal that every goal that final. Sorry, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, that's what he's right. Every, every goal that final scored was like that. We lost the ball. <laughs> Bang! Goal. Instant. Yeah. Every goal. I, I would say Broby is capable of yeah. holding the ball, but not if you send him a high ball or a long ball. You have to send him like yeah, you have to pass it through. You know that's the difference. Okay, let me go to the comments, guys, because we're running a little bit out of time. Um, so I had. Uh, okay, I'm saying since Kudus and Al Alvarez left, things have never been the same. Yeah, all right. Um, Gamble Studios is reacting to Ajax DNA. That's like regressing hairline. All right, that's an interesting take. Uh, people are already reacting a little bit to the Ajax DNA. Uh, Angela is saying Ajax DNA surely is a style of play and philosophy that's missing at the moment, fully committed and a free flowing style. Yeah, so that's a good bridge uh, to start with. Mm. Let me see. Uh, Christian is saying, in my honest opinion, we had the ideal trainer already with Michael Reiziger. I know people will say he doesn't have enough experience, but Vahal and Boer didn't have that as well when they started. Can I uh, react to that? If, if you go for Reiziger, why not just stay with Heitinger? That's my question to Christian. Sorry? If you want Reiziger as uh, the next one, why not just stay with Heitinger? That, that would think... be my question. If you're already... I mean, Heitinga had also a very troublesome team to deal with. Why not give him an another chance for the transfer window and then a season? But if you're I talking about Reisiger in that sense. Reisiger had more of a, a kind of... A, he had a lot of success with the youth, right? Didn't he? he yeah, he, he became he, champions with Bukharda. True. Yeah, had a lot of success with the youth. And also, he was around Ten Hag. He was coaching around... And I, I, don't, I can't remember how long had he been coaching the first team with Ten Hag the whole time or... Yeah, the whole time, I think. I, I, I think yeah. it would have been more continuity. It was surprising how Bogarda and Reisiger left. Reisiger seems like a like players like him, a, a kind of character. And you would have expected that to come from uh, the guy who's there at the moment. Um, what's he called? The 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 football the guy he brought in? Uh, Maduro. You would expect that Maduro would have filled that. You don't know whether he did. You don't know what his coaching style is like. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't disagree. I think I think Reisinger will be a much better than now, and maybe Bokarda till the end of the season. 
Yeah. All right. I have to move on, guys. Sorry. Um, go, go, go. Tina is saying, uh, which formation should the new manager play? And the manager should be given time? Question mark. Uh, does the manager should be, I mean, should he be Dutch? We'll yes. talk about that in a bit with the Ajax DNA. Um, let me see. What else do we have? Oh, I saw Sahbi in the, also dropping a message. Puppy's always right. He always says that yeah. when he's not around, right? When he's not on the panel. <laughs> but when he's exactly. here, he has different theories. Okay. Um, let me see. Um, just in saying, I agree with Damien on Forbes. He seems the only player to be actually able to keep up with the level of the other teams. Uh, the other players seem quite stagnant. I like Justin. I like him. <laughs> He's smart, huh? You can go up. Of course you, course you do. do. Of course you do. Um, and yeah, Anthony is saying, look, uh, not fit, but if you play 505 as a formation, you need a lot of fitness. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. That's what we are, we are that's playing, what man. That's basically what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and people reacting to the last part of um, Reisger and Bocharda. Anthony saying Reisger and were um, in front of Heidegger by miles, in my opinion. So, yeah, you know, a lot of people in retrospect thinking that. Um, Remy is saying, uh, would have loved to have uh, Reisger and Bocharda staff in the retrospect. Exactly. So, yeah, here we go. Uh, guys, let's move to the DNA. We don't have a lot of time on this one, although it's the main topic. Um, Look, um, Sven from the beginning, and we know from certain media outlets that they have been targeting Sven Mislintat. And I'm not saying that Mislintat didn't do anything wrong, but it was a little bit uh, too much, right? Let's be honest. But also a lot of old Ajax uh, players that are now pundits or football players that are pundits, they always say, I don't recognize Ajax anymore. This is not the Ajax DNA. Sorry, I got unplugged. I don't know why. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes? Yes, sorry, again. So I was thinking this week, right, about the IX DNA, and I was thinking, okay, but what is it? Everybody talks about it, but what do we think of, of it in general? What should it be? Are we talking about IX DNA in terms of players on the field? Are we talking about IX DNA as a culture that, ha that has to be in the club? And who should be those kind of people that do that? Um, so I want your opinion briefly from all three of you. Like, how do you see it? Like, when people talk about Ajax DNA, how important is it according to you? And what's your uh, thoughts about that in general, on and off the pitch? So what I said, like maybe players, you look more at players, or you look at more like no, it, it has to be also the positions that are filled in, like maybe the Bayern Munich model. You know, like they have old players, which Kraft always advocated for to do it like that, and that's why we went with Overmars and Van der Sar. Let me start with uh, with Papi Menta. Well, back in the day, I always thought IX DNA was if you're from youth. Oh, you don't hear me? You don't hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Could you guys hear me, by the way? I don't hear you guys. Can yeah, you yeah. guys hear me? Yeah, 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 I yeah. hear you. Okay. I don't hear Papi Mento. Then there's something wrong with you, man. I don't but hear I, you. Yeah. I don't hear you. I can hear you. I can hear Papi. Yeah. Uh, Gary, Damien, can you talk? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? I don't hear yeah, you. Yeah, I'm here, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to continue while Juan... Can the yeah. people in the comments let me know who they hear? Do they hear me or do they hear Papimento or Gary or Damien? Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Coming from Hofdorp. Loud and clear. Everyone... One got one uh, said mute and right, unmute I everybody. Hear anyone for that? Godfrey. Okay, so they can, can hear, hear everyone. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard though. I cannot hear you. Um, I don't hear anyone. I just hear myself now. It's like an echo. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is weird. Okay, I'll host. Um, so Bobby, let me go out. You? Let me go out. I'll be back. I'll, I'll, I'll leave sure. and come back. Okay, I'll just host. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Papi, you want to go ahead? <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to say that back in the day, I always thought um, that the DNA was part of players that played for Ajax. Um, so you would have to be brought up from the youth academy, played with the Ajax one, and then you would be considered Ajax DNA. But that has changed for me a little bit. Uh, Juan, you're back. You hear us? Yes, perfect. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Very good. 
So yeah, I was saying that Ajax DNA was back in the day when I was still young. I thought that was if you're in the youth of Ajax, you went through the whole tragedy, you know, the you use the uh, department and then you start Ajax one and you have a career. From there on, you could say Ajax DNA, but it, it became a more uh, loosely uh, an, um, term for me. I think uh, if you look at, for instance, you have to look at several uh, levels within a structure or a company. Um, so if you look at the coach, I think IX DNA should be the philosophy, the uh, the play, um, how you want to uh, attack, how the possession based game. That should be your experience. That should be how you want to play. That matches with the philosophy of Ajax. That's for me Ajax DNA when it comes to coaches. For players, I told you, I think Ajax DNA was the youth coming through. But also there are a lot of players that came from other clubs that had the Ajax DNA. And an example would be Suarez, for instance, came from Groningen. But I would say that he has Ajax DNA in the quality he has, in the finesse that he has, let's say. I see that also a little bit as Ajax DNA. And when we're talking about board members and Ajax DNA, I think they're more mostly talking about players, uh, ex-coaches that have done well with Ajax, that played at a high level, and um, that they need that technical and that experience in the board to uh, assign the right players, assign the right coaches, assign the right sporting director, and have the network in the uh, in the business. But how much of the Ajax DNA has to be in, in the club as a whole, uh, Papi Mento? Because, look, you gave an example as Suarez. I would give an example like Eriksen or Frankie de Jong. Those, for me, are pinnacles of players that got from outside, you know? Yeah. Uh, as Ajax DNA, that they carry Same the example. Ajax DNA. But yeah. if we step away from that for a bit, it's clear on the field. But in the club, running, you know, everything. How much Ajax DNA should be there? And what is Ajax DNA? I mean, Marco von yeah. Basta was our coach. Hold on. Marco von Basta was our coach, old Ajax player, one of the best, maybe the best. Okay. Players. Yeah. Yeah. As a player, would you say? Yeah, he's not as a coach. Yeah, only player. Would you say, only player. Would you say he's Ajax DNA? Is he Ajax he is DNA? I don't see whether he's good or not. I'm just saying. Yeah, he's he Ajax DNA. DNA. Yes. But, okay. but with Marco von Basta, I mean, he is the guy that said that Anthony is not a good player. So for me, it's also about do you have the capability of looking at this player and thinking, I could do something with that. And he thinks Anthony is not a good player. I could do a lot with it, Anthony. So it's not only about the philosophy you want to play. It's also about how do you judge players? Can you make players better as a coach? Can you? There's so much more than just having the Ajax DNA. And when we talk about the supervisory board and the, the directors, I think it's important to have um, that that uh, connection with your club. So uh, they want the best for our club. Uh, it's always been like this when we restructure. It's always X I X that has to come in to fix us because the people that are there uh, are mostly bookkeepers. They don't understand football, so they're making all the right decisions, uh, all the wrong decisions. But if you look at it, we had seven years ago a crime that had to come in. To, uh, or was it 10 years ago? I'm sorry, Kreifert had to come in to restructure our whole uh, club. Then 10 years further, we have one high, and um, that's it. They, they cannot reproduce it. Uh, our structure is not what it was, and we have to ask another old guard, XDNA, XIX DNA, to come back to fix it. But below Van Gaal, below Kreif, I'm not seeing a whole lot of IX DNA that we can ask or is at that level. To be brought in on the supervisory board, or but so the IX... there is something there that we're not getting enough IX DNA through. But yeah. we have IX DNA in the sense that just quickly, we have the IX DNA like Van der Vaart, Snyder, um, who else? Those those type of old players. Would you yeah. would you give them a sticker? Those are IX DNA because just to be clear, no. I'm not talking about quality. I'm talking about what is IX DNA. It doesn't as have a, as a the same as a player, yes, uh, Juan. I see them as Ajax DNA as the philosophy and how they think about football. Uh, I've seen them talk on uh, on the channels, and most of the time, sixty percent of the time, it's a whole different philosophy than I think they should be playing. So, I don't agree totally, but they have played on the highest level. Their experience would always be a benefit for the people that never played football. 
or never watch football are just there uh, for the numbers and the budgeting and things like that. They okay, need advice about, from hold experts. On, hold, on. hold on, but what about if he's not an old Ajax player, but he's very good in his, whether he's a coach, a sporting director, uh, a CEO, or would you still go yes. for him? And Hach is a perfect example of not being an Ajax DNA before yeah. being hired. And uh, But he did have the experience. His philosophy is attacking way of playing. And he made us, I mean, one of the best footballs I've seen in 1890. Yeah, so, yeah. But again, everything about that connects well with the Ajax philosophy. So in that sense, yes, he does have the Ajax DNA. Maurice Stein, on the other hand, low block defense, doesn't know how to attack 0. Yeah. 0.0 uh, XG per game. That's not the Ajax way. That's not the Ajax philosophy. Has nothing of an Ajax DNA with him. Okay, but just to, re uh, just to summarize before I go to Damien quickly. You're seeing Ajax DNA is also carrying out the mission, the vision of Ajax, the way, the identity of Ajax. Let me put it this way, right? Exactly. Okay. But it, so it doesn't have to be, but it doesn't have to be somebody that played for Ajax necessarily. Although you need those as well to, to um, sustain the culture of Ajax. Yes. That's what you're saying. 100%. Yeah. 100%. But we also know the examples, Juan, of Ajax DNA and uh, their Thoughts not aligning. Look at uh, Wim Jong and Bergkamp that get in a fight and then leave. I mean, these things, you know, you have to come to a compromise. It can't always be as so much Ajax DNA comes in. They have to find a middle ground because you're not going to find one-on-one, -on -one, everybody agreeing with each other. That's never going to happen. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Poppy. Uh, Damien, go ahead. Yeah, so for me, it's all about Ajax DNA is the plan. It's how you interpret what you're going to do. And I think there's a couple of things. Originally, remember me and you, Juan, we had a conversation back about, I wanted Sven out, you wanted the manager out back then. And I blame Sven. And uh, look, we were both right. Because they're both terrible. But if you look at the IX DNA, right? We look, look, we look like now that we don't have a plan. It looks like nobody, none of the thinking was joined up. If you... And I think a club like Ajax or a club like Bayern Munich or a club like Barcelona, Real Madrid, are very different from an Arsenal or a Manchester United, where you've got an owner, where you've got somebody who's who's going to reach into a draw and pay the money and go into debt and that kind of thing. So it's a different business culture. Sven was at, was at Arsenal when he came in, uh, before he came in, and he came into Ajax and he didn't understand the complexities of where the power was, where the influence was. And he had a, a, a free reign. And in my opinion, that's where it went wrong. It was power unchecked. And uh, and we will probably, and somebody said, it's 10 years till we get back at the top. Maybe five, maybe 10. But power unchecked will be the reason why that happens. Ajax DNA is about having the right amount of Ajax DNA at the right levels. You need it in the board by the way you respond to statements and things that you do. You need it in the in the the technical part of the club or the, the 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 football managerial part of the club and to be honest you need it with the manager now the manager doesn't have to be dutch and the manager doesn't have to be ex ajax but he has to have an understanding of what that is tenard wasn't but the two guys next to him were and you see that with reisiger with the, he really used them a lot they were really close there was no division they were together you could tell they sparred with each other I attended a couple of uh, training sessions and I watched it and uh, the open training. And he, there was a lot of like, uh, between them, there was a lot of discussion. They seemed like they were a team. And I think now you've got Stein, you've got Maduro. I'm not questioning how, how much Maduro is. I know someone's put on the, in the questions there, there in the comments about whether he's got Ajax DNA. Of course they have. Everybody who's played for Ajax has an Ajax DNA. But it's up to the leadership to make sure that's balanced. So Ten Hag came in. He was a sprightly, in the beginning, we didn't really know whether he was going to be a success or not. But he came in and he added to the Ajax DNA. He took what we had and he added to it. Steins came in and he's ruined it. You know, there was the ingredients there for a lovely bolognese. But what we've got is something that tastes like chili con carne and, and <laughs> something that comes up back the dog. So if I'm going to get the chef analogy in, you know, it's Ajax DNA is the ingredients. Now, it, it, that might be a bolognese. And somebody might come along and stick ginger in it, and it might taste fantastic. But the, the, the baseline of Ajax is all about 
passing football, pressing football, 4-3-3, dignity. If you look at the way the board are now at the moment, they're not even responding in an Ajax way to things. The way some of the press releases come out, it, it's, it doesn't feel Ajax to me. I th- and we were spoiled because I think, you know, um, what's called Van der Sar, uh, um, Overmars, they were true Ajax people to the core. What we need going forward is a, is a, is a really good balance of that. And with conversation whether the manager should be Dutch. No, I don't think so. But I think if he's not going to be, he's, he needs to come in with a big footballing philosophy. And if, if Sven had managed to go for the, the guy out of Scandinavia, um, maybe it's, it's a different story. Krutzen. Krutzen, yeah. But maybe it's a different story because to me, he looks like, an, like Ajax DNA. He looks like he's got something there. And maybe he comes in and maybe... But he probably wouldn't have had any of these players because he would, he would have thought there. Yeah. Personally, going forward, I think um, Stein was a yes man for Sven. I said it on the day he was appointed, and I say it now. I think Sven realised what was around him, and he decided if he couldn't get his man, he wanted a yes man. And I think Sven is nothing more or less than that. Just, but, just to react on that, yeah. we'll go to the puppy quickly, quickly, because I want to go to Gary as well. Yeah, yeah, I just want to say that he's insinuating that Sven had too much control, but most of the choices he made wasn't even his choice, and he was blocked by, I don't know if it's Van der Sar or Erve or supervisory board, yeah, but so... he didn't get the coach he wanted, and he had to make some compromises and get his goals done, right? So, yeah, it's I not think all last... Sven. Yeah, I think last week or the week before, uh, I'm sorry on the date, not exactly sure which one it was, but... Uh, it was revealed by a journalist from the VE, from Football International, that basically what happened was um, they were looking at Knutze, for instance, but management wanted a Dutch coach. And then Peter Bos came uh, came up, the name came up, but they didn't want, and they is probably from the start, didn't want Bos. So basically, you are not giving total freedom like we thought it would be to Sven to appoint anyone he wants. He had to appoint people within certain, how do you call it, like boxes. He had right. choices. He had to go with Dutch coaches. Boss was not an option. Okay, I still don't think it's, I still don't understand why you come up with Stein. Let's be honest. Nobody does. No. I'm just saying that it wasn't like uh, he deliberately 100% from the get-go was pointing to, yes, I'm going to get Stein because he's the easy target and he will say yes to everything I want to do. I think and, that's and just... do you guys think that if he had boss, that boss would have accepted that Sven makes all the uh, all the decisions on the transfers? No, th- that's what no. I mean. No, no. Okay, uh, Gary, go ahead. Sorry, man, it took a, ba- a bit, but um, no, it's but... fine. I've been, I'm enjoying listening to your points, and I agree with all of you. I mean, if you're asking the original question about DNA, if you know me yes. long enough now to know that I'm a I'm a romantic Ajax fan. You know, I think of the cry. The Kaiser, uh, Van Basten, as you know, with me and Burkamp, etc. But the problem with Ajax at the moment is that when I, I'm so disconnected from the club, and when I talk about DNA, when I think about them, I don't, I don't think about the 18-19 team, what's happened in the last couple of years. I always think about to cry and what made me fall in love with the club and the culture. So DNA for me is obviously everything from playing for the club, coming through the youth, winning with the club, um, and all the other managers we've had come in that haven't had a a youthfulness with Ajax has still taken upon the philosophy of that club and won with us. And that's for me, the DNA It's not about Christ and all that. It's a, it's a club for the whole 120 odd years. We've, we're a very romantic club. We're very well followed. And sometimes I don't really appreciate, especially fans I speak to in the UK, don't appreciate how massive we are, you know, yeah. um, despite the league we're in um, and the teams we play, we are super, super big. You know, we're respected. And that's my problem that I'm having with my disconnection currently with the club is that I'm never going to fall out of love with my team. But at the moment, I, I don't like my team. I don't like my, my the the hierarchy of how it's run. And um, yeah, that's how I feel about the DNA. There's lots of elements to it. We've got to have a good, the the people that sign the, the checks, people that uh, make all the policies, they've got to be right. But I don't agree with ex-players being that high up, my opinion. They're the players for a reason. And they don't always make great CEOs and, and great people of decision makers. But where we got it right with Van der Sar, Over Mars, you know, and Ten Hag, that for me is what we have to do next. We have to try and replicate that 
with really good quality IX DNA people, not X players, anyone, but it's been associated, but we have to get it right. And um, yeah, the way I see it also for me, you know, I, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Gary. Sorry, go ahead. No, one thing I wanted to say to you all tonight is um, one thing that really upset me. Do you remember the interview with um, Tadic when he left in the summer? And he said after speaking with Sven, and he said his, his plans for Ajax, his plans, not anyone else's, his plans for the new Ajax, thus for me, we're never going to be the new Ajax. We are Ajax. We know what we've been doing for the last 120 odd years. And that, for me, seeing people for the first time in my time, not want to be at our club. That's how it feels. That's not acceptable. And that's why I think we've acted quickly because we all thought Stein was going to go that night. Don't tell me any of you guys and the, and the, and the viewers tonight thought it was not going to be Morris Stein getting sacked and not then leaving that evening. I was shocked. Don't tell me you guys wasn't. I was. But the manager's there now and he wants to get sacked, that manager. He wants to yeah. get sacked. He's making these comments every week because yeah. I don't want to pay him off. That's the difference as well, you know? Um, but yeah, back to the, the topic quickly. DNA, one, uh, one, there's loads of reasons how I feel. Ex players to non ex players, you have to love the club, respect the culture, respect the history, and then it all comes together. That's for me, DNA. Guys, can, can I come back to you there about something? Quickly. I will, yeah. I will add to it a little bit. DNA is also the fans. Now, I've been, you know, I go to pretty much every Ajax game, you know. Sometimes the Sunday night ones, not not I can't be bothered. I've got my slippers on. But one thing about it is, I've never seen the atmosphere in the stadium as bad as as, as it is now. And if you look, no, I've never seen this bad. Look, under 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 Martin Yol, he had Pantelich. You know, what I mean, like you know, he was he was a genius. You know, it's like there's been a sort of hope. There's been a sort. Of, ah, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. I think this is the worst I've seen. This is even worse than it was under uh, Kaiser. And you you also, it's eight euros for a beer. Um, the, you know, the you searched in, you searched out. The atmosphere, getting into the ground is hard. The whole match day experience. I know they're doing a lot of stuff on social media. You get spammed on Instagram now with the club comments. Well, let me reply. You know, I'll, I'll get back in there and tell you what I think. You know, I think they need to drop that right away. But I think Ajax DNA is also the fans. And I tell you what, they have been the most affected this season. They've been the most let down because the players are still getting paid a wage. Nobody there is going to worry about where the next meal is coming from. But there's people on, there's people out there in a cost of living crisis in Amsterdam who are prioritising what the team they love. to see the team they love. And it's horrible on the pitch. And it's horrible off the pitch. There's nothing nice about Ajax at the moment. So Ajax DNA is all about the fan experience, you know, and 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 melting down the thing, giving everybody stars, and I mean, it's fantastic. But actually, what we want to go is go to the stadium and see perform. Whether we win or lose, we want to see a performance, right? And good football. So DNA and good football. And DNA, DNA uh, against AZ, I never seen the stadium so quiet. Everybody was just. I was like, at a certain point, I was like. Shouldn't we just be cheering them on, like doing something? Maybe we can help them get over the hump. But there was no sound. Everybody was looking at, is this Ajax? Is this the level we're going to expect this whole season? I think people, people were short with the level and the quality and what we were doing. We, we're not we're not used to seeing that kind of performance, to be honest. Yeah. Well, Nobody I knows lot, how to deal with it. I think a lot of the fans are, yeah, a lot of the fans are given up as well. I mean, when I was at the final game and we went 3-0 down, people next to me, strangers who I've never met, talking to me, they were laughing. I've always seen yeah. anger before or frustration, but the chap next to me was laughing, you know, and he went to the toilet and he didn't come back. This is well before the flares. Well before the flares, man. So what, I don't know where he was. He was probably on a train back home, you know? Um, and you think, you know, a lot of us now from other countries, you're getting to know, and we're spending lots of money and, you know, it's a pleasure to see you guys and come over and see our stadium and see our players live. We don't think about the money when we're there. But at the moment, the the DNA um, will never go away. But it's what Sven Stein has created this season. It's a real discontent, and they've got to do a lot more to win us round and get us back. Absolutely. I think, I think uh, you know, I just want to add some positivity to everything, although it's very difficult. 
Um, we're talking about Ajax DNA, coming back to that. I think uh, it was revealed a few weeks ago. And it was an idea from uh, Menno Gele, um, actually one of the directors that's doing an impeccable job at Ajax. Yeah. So he came up basically with the idea to have like this talent program for all yes. the Ajax players. And then, but not for um, um, like uh, jobs that are related to coaching and on the pitch, but more uh, com- uh, director, being a CEO, like a commercial, like everything that's like different and giving them a two-year track uh, program to develop. And maybe this will help in the future because also what Papimento said, we're looking at the old guard to come back and help us. And we need new and fresh people to come in that play for Ajax and have the qualities and the skills to lead us to a new future, right? So this is important as well. So I think maybe that, I think this is very important as well. So they might be good for us. Um, so it would be actually uh, not the same tra- tragic as uh, what Fondersar did to become a CEO, basically, something like that? Possibility, yeah, it's a possibility. But the same De Jong? Who, who Saint De Jong, uh, Ricardo Ferrein, um, yeah. what's the guy's name? I forgot the other one, the the, the winger that we yeah. used to have. I forgot Daniel. his name. Sorry? Daniel? Daniel De Ridder. Exactly. And and girl. I'm one sorry. Of the female, one of the girls. She it? Also one, yes, exactly. I, I forgot her name, to be honest. Uh, Trust, but yeah, yeah. Four, so we have four candidates right now, but it's going to be most likely something that will stay now going forward. So there will be more applicants coming uh, in the future. So I think that's good. You know, perfect. Yeah. Let me go to the comments, guys. Uh, again, we're running a little bit out of time, but still, I want to give the viewers uh, time to... Uh, There's a really good comment from Jerry. Jerry Person. Yeah. I like him. It's a really good comment, that. Maybe you can react to that when I come to it. Uh, just yeah, a moment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I don't know if I already discussed this, but let me start here. Anthony is saying, the whole Ajax DNA we make uh, too big these days. They're bringing in too much old players without any contribution. Too many... Too many captains on a ship will also go wrong. Yeah, I think also Papimento said it with Bergkamp and uh, Jung as an example. Yeah. Um, and uh, John is, of course, making the joke that I always hear every week. Um, I thought it was last question already. No, I really had problems with the uh, with the sound. Sorry for that. Um, let me say, Ajax DNA is in a type of player person, not necessarily from Ajax but with certain qualities and mentality, since many of our greatest Ajaxida have been transferred in, but where to find them exactly? I think we touched upon that uh, now. Um, then Angelo is saying, Ajax DNA was really something which uh, Van Halst, I believe, brought to the club. Van Halst? Does he mean Van Halst? Van Halst. Yeah, Van Halst. Yeah, he probably means Van Halst. I misspelled it. Coaching style of play. So thank you, Papi. Uh, oh, here we go. He's correct himself. We forgot. Sorry. All right. Um, Jerry, do you guys think Maduro has the Ajax DNA? Is this what you meant or was it another comment, uh, Damien? No, a bit further down. A bit further down. We'll come right. to it. Quickly on this one. What do you guys think? Does he fit the Ajax DNA narrative we spoke about? If you were going to find out, would this be the right moment to find it out? Like, is, is the good stuff he's doing coming across with all the noise? You don't know, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's true. I would say he just based he, because he played at Ajax, I would say he has Ajax DNA. But I don't know his coaching style. I don't know how he thinks. I don't know if he's a uh, attacking type of coach or a defensive type of coach. He's a CDM, so it can go either way. I, or I is Stein even listening to his opinions? We don't know, do we, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, exactly. And 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 I I'm not gonna fall for the assistant coach is actually the real trainer because Ten Hag cannot do it and Schroeder is better. He's actually the real reason Ajax is doing all these things so good. That was the whole agenda back then. And then we got Schroeder as a coach and he ruined it. So I'm never gonna accept that the assistant has a bigger role than the coach. Papi, I also fell for that as well. I fell for that as well, 100. percent We were we were absolutely done there. All right, uh, let me go uh, to the other comment. Christian is saying, uh, guys, would Nigel de Jong be an ideal candidate for being on the board since he currently has a job at the Dutch National Football Association? Um, look, maybe I can react to that quickly and maybe we can move on. Uh, if you guys want to add to that, that's fine. I think maybe, to me, um, we should bring in old players 
uh, that played for Ajax, that's good to a certain extent. I think also we have to bring in people with experience. And I think Nigel de Jong doesn't have the experience to be on the board or being a part of the management just yet. Let him build up experience first, show himself, and then come at a later stage at Ajax. I think in the future, I would like to have Nigel de Jong at Ajax. But first, he has to prove himself. Like, for example, if we look at Alex Cruz, for instance, right? I did, I did some research on him. Um, he went to, he, he played at the youth of Ajax um, and uh, also outside of, of football, he's a very successful businessman. And he also uh, let, uh, he was the owner of Go Ahead Eagles. So he also was uh, managing, you cannot say managing, but owning a football club. So he's also in the football business. He had his own business. He's been successful. He's now working at the at Asset. There are a lot of reasons, together with his Ajax history, yeah. to go for him now. And that's different than when you go and appoint somebody that just has to start, you know, exactly. for the first time. And we give him the keys, like, oh, because he played for Ajax, let, let's see how he, do, how he does, you know? That's a big risk. We shouldn't do that. I mean, sometimes it works out, like from the board, it works out. But it shouldn't be a guarantee that we should go down that path. We should be more careful in that as well. And I think, again, coming back to the, you know, like this program that has been uh, started, like this two-year track program, I think that's good as well. So I just wanted to react like that, to that. So, um, too bad Sven is saying, Fahal DNA uh, likes Chelsea under Tuchel. No Dutch-style football at our national team either. Uh, neither the Boer, all five defenders stuff when you don't have proper players. Uh, the Dutch team doesn't have proper players for a 4-3-3, so I'm sorry. If if that's the argument, then I, I disagree because he doesn't have the players to play what he wants. So at Ajax in 95, he played how he wanted. So that's how you should judge him, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think Anthony, yeah, all right. Um, okay, that's fine. Um, Anthony is saying 100% agree with Damien. Um and also That's Jerry. Smart man. Name. He's a smart man. <laughs> Jerry is saying the fans have no connection with this team. So basically what you said as well, uh, Damien. Um, Clive, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, how can we expect Stan to turn this around when almost the whole squad was bought in by the person who Stan himself ratted out? These players will never give their 100% to Stan. Yeah. That's another one. I think I think Gary, you said that basically a little bit as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. It won't change until he goes and um we can get a proper coaching, like Puppy said about an hour ago, get a proper coaching, get some confidence in these players, and we'll still we'll see how their quality progresses from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh another one for you, Damien. And you should be on the channel maybe more often. You're getting so many people agreeing with you. It doesn't happen in real life, right? It, it, it honestly, I walk around, people just like wave at me and go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, People who read my mind, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, man. These comments right. costing 200 euros tonight, Juan. Yeah, it's cost me a fortune. <laughs> uh, Len is saying, Papi, uh, you seem a bit high in your emotion, man. You're not letting other panel members finish their sentence. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. They but you are emotional. Let me finish. <laughs> you, can, you can confirm that, right? That you're a bit emotional lately. I am. If if you're an IX fan, you should be very emotional in the period we are in. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I yeah, am. Exactly. Um, uh, here we go. People are already a fan. Angela, Angela is saying, Damien, when are you hosting your own show? <laughs> I think it was the take. Take, I, take, I can go on vacation. You come here. I'll I'll take some time off. That's I fine. took over when you when we couldn't hear you. I decided to host it. So I think that's what he's like. <laughs> yeah, I think people will like you being the host. So I, I'll just go on vacation. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think I have those kind of qual facilities to do that qualities. All right. So you're uh, paneling? You're shopping in the corner. Yeah, yeah, 100%. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, the Vagebond is saying, I agree with Damien. Uh, the plan is more important than the persons. Tenkata never played for Ajax, but the way his team performed, it was decent, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, if you think about it, if you think about it, Tadic didn't have a history at Ajax before he came at Ajax either, but that's that's breathing Ajax DNA. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, that Gary's quite fit, isn't he? Uh, I would I'm glad to see we got blind people uh, coming on the, on the show. You know, 
That cost me 500 euros, that comment, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Anthony is saying, uh, look, um, you have to fix the light next time. It's uh, true. I, I have to fix the light. My my wife, there was a light here. It was really good. And she's moved it. And I didn't realize that I came in, put the light on. Yeah, I'll fix the light. But then again, you're I think alive. You're, you're not paid the bill, Dave. That's a candle light, mate. You're not paid the Are bill. That's a that? candle light. Are you ready to see this beauty? In, I'm, I'm better in the dark, to be honest. <laughs> um, guys, just to wrap up, I think I, I, I went through all the comments. Look, hey, you're yeah. seeing... Go on. Yeah. It's Mr. Tika said, KKD incoming. What the hell is the club thinking? KKD? Uh, uh, the the championship for us. In the, in, in oh, the... sorry. I, I was thinking I was th an, an acronym for somebody coming in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I wanted to pull it up as as a last one. Um, the thing is, you know, we talked about it a lot today, and um, I just want to end, and maybe you guys can react to that as, as a final. Um, you are seeing since... Fahal became external advisor. You are seeing things happening right now, right? So we heard about Van het Schip. Uh, by the way, condolences to yeah. his wife. His of wife, course. yeah. Yeah, very sad news. Um, so he's going to be, we don't know exactly in what shape or form he's going to you know, be involved. It's not crystallized yet, but let's see what happens. Um, Danny Blind, like Gary said already today, apparently coming back for the for the supervisory board. Um, Jan Burgers. Uh, very interesting name, by the way. Um, we want to talk more about him today, but we run out of time. Maybe we'll do it next time. But also very interesting. Um, you know, he Fahal is looking at the organization, at the structure, and he's trying to focus on that, which I think is very good. The only thing I'm worried about uh, is, like, are we also going to look at the short term? Because this season is also very important for us in many ways, mm -hmm. financially, but also uh, player development, uh, youth players developing, etc. All these kind of things is very important. So uh, I don't know. Just want to ask you guys and also the people in the comment, like, how do you guys feel about um, what's going to happen in terms of uh, Stein being the coach? Uh, who's going to take over? Are we going with an interim solution? What's your feeling? What's your guts telling you right now in the coming weeks? Because we haven't talked about it, but we're we're playing. Uh, PSV and Bright, Utrecht, Brighton, PSV, in that order. And Utrecht always becomes prime Barcelona when they play play, play us. So, oh. you know? It's a bottom of the table clash, man. I'm sorry? It's bottom, bottom of the of table the clash table. in a couple of weeks, man. Relegation yeah. six-pointer. <laughs> exactly. yeah. It's actually very sad to say that. Um, what, do you guys, what do you guys think will happen? Uh, just, well, just, I mean, it's well, difficult, but what do you think? Juan, in the beginning of the season, we had a conversation and I said third. And you were like, what? What? And I, I just, you know, I was saying I just didn't see us. And that wasn't me being sarcastic. I just didn't think based on the changes that were around and what needed to happen, players that we'd signed, that we were better than than null twenty and null teen. We, you know, uh, sorry, null teen and what, what's the what's the what's um postcode of uh for, um PSV? PSV? I uh, don't know. What do you mean? Uh, before, before him, before Boss. So no, the area code. The area yeah. code of uh, Brabant. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, I didn't think we were better than them. You look at them, it's it's obvious that their they're, they're setup was better than us, their momentum was better than us. Boss going in, you knew he was going to do this. He's a good manager. You know, and Pele is probably listening. He probably disagrees. But I, I think he was. I think we wouldn't be in that situation we are now. I said third. I don't think we've got a hope in hell of catching those guys now. I think third, we would be very, very lucky. I, I think we've got to focus on uh, stabilizing the team, pleasing the fans. And yeah, you know, we're going to have to budget for a season out of European football, in, in, in my Second opinion. Second season in a row. Yeah. Well, even out of, we, we might not even get into the, into the Europa League. The way it's, uh, it looks, the way it looks, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be very difficult. Um, look, well, I'm uh, gonna keep it really quick. I, I I think we're going for an interim solution soon because I I just don't think yeah. Stein will survive. So interim solution till Cruz gets assigned. That's my personal feeling, and then maybe he will um, agreed. He, he he will get that team going, put a duo that he can work with, that has synergy, that can get us back 
but till then, I think I heard, this I heard, is over. Yeah, I heard just just before you give a name, I heard one of the viewers that we have made a comment uh, last week. Uh, I think it was Steve. Correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, Steve, if it's not true. Uh, I'm getting older. My memory sometimes doesn't uh, uh, go with me. But um, he said, like, why are we t- uh, why are we talking about interim in the first place? It's still early in the season. Why don't we just hire somebody? What do you guys have to say about that? Permanently. So not an interim solution. The structure is not there for you to permanently hire someone at the moment. And you did that. It's Schroeder, it's Heitinga, and now it's another coach that you're going to fire in a year and a half. Yeah. So maybe that requires somebody else to make the decision and not a supervisory board that has nothing to do with the football aspect of things. Maybe it should be Cruz that makes those decisions because he understands what is required of uh, both um, profile of job. Well, so at Ajax, I I, th- I think you've got a you've got a on the other side in this situation. If we want somebody really good, who's going to come? Because that's another thing, right? Like you know, there's a lot of jobs out there. There's not a lot of great managers out there. So an interim solution would paint the picture, and they can go and look for candidates in the right. I would rather they did an interim solution. They took the time, went out and found the right person, and 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 listen, maybe the right person is somebody, an ex-Ajax player, and they agree with the plan and they're on board and then they take over at the beginning of the next season. But for, for me, if you're going to go out there and get somebody decent, it would be a stroke of luck that they turn up now, that they're walking along now and think, oh, I'll take the Ajax job. And we don't pay that much money. So to be honest with you, you've got to be realistic. We're not going to get a... a I, I heard with Knutsen that his salary expectations were a lot higher than we wanted to pay. That was another thing as well. And the contract. Are you, but are you going to take that plunge? Are you going to take that risk? Because it's always a bigger risk if you get a foreign coach. We talked about this before. My feeling, my feeling is, maybe I'm wrong. We're going to end up with Frank de Boer. Yeah, me too. Oh, me or Jean Van der Brom, someone like that, and and a, a dependable. Look, Van der Brom did a great job at AZ. You've got the guy from AZ coming yeah, in. But- yeah, but after that, I mean, Belgium, it wasn't very successful either. I don't know if he's that kind of caliber coach. He doesn't have ruined by night with Frank de Boer, man. I think Yadirenko also mentioned Fred Grimm uh, on Sunday. Also, I think, you know, it's it's a risk. He, he hasn't proven himself on a higher, on a bigger stage. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And and you could say the same about Frank de Boer, but at least Frank de Boer coached Ajax for many years and he was successful. At least he has that. Frank de Boer will bring you a stability that you can build on. Frank de Boer will bring you a stability where you can appoint a Knutsen or somebody to come in. The problem is if you appoint a foreign coach when the club's a mess, he's not going to understand the signals, he's not going to understand it. You know, you, 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 need, straight away. Yeah, you need to give somebody the ingredients for success. Frank de Boer is going to come in and realise that he's got the ingredients for a shitty lasagna and he's going to put something out. Sorry, uh, I didn't swear. But he's, going to, but he's going to put something out there that's going to surprise you. That's Frank de Boer. But I, I agree with Papi. It's probably where we're going to end up, Juan. I agree with you. But it's not what we want. Yeah. It's not what we want. Yeah. Um, just uh, to finalize uh, everything, thank you guys, by the way. Uh, this is a little bit longer than one hour. But Jerry is saying, look, only if it's Kuz's choice. So basically what Pocamento was saying, it has to be in the right order, uh, you know, uh, top down, basically, and not making appointments and still not having the structure uh, ready. Um, and then he's saying, so only if it's Cruz's choice and adding to that uh, uh, first um, uh, CEO, uh, Ahmed Director, and then the technical director. So, yeah. And then last comment that we have, Marvel Thug is saying, Clara Sedor for interim, Michael Reiser, her next full head coach. Yeah, but also with Sedor, his he track... didn't do well as a coach. No, no. Anybody I wouldn't even consider Sedor, to be honest, as, as somebody on the field. I would consider him maybe mm, sporting director. Maybe mm, I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't know. Maybe a few guys have seen it, but he's really big in the UK media at the moment. He speaks really well. He's a pundit on a lot of things. Um, his his international uh, um, image has gone really high. Very speaks very mm-hmm. well eloquently. He's liked by a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Maybe, you know, because he's now also at the Kansas Bay, right? He's at the Dutch National Association. Um, I think he's a board member. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
but you know this is this is good we need more of these very good players uh, adding to their resume having more being in the circle of football and learning stuff and maybe one day they can come to ajax and they can be um, added value to us as well and we would love that to see that as well um quickly on i said it was the last comment you guys know if people send more comments i will look at it i'm sorry last one i last one um Murder Inc. is saying, guys, help me. Why can't I get Cruz now? So as far, let me answer that one. And maybe you guys can add if I didn't understand it correctly. So basically, he's with AZ. He has a non-compete in his contract, which means uh, he's not allowed, actually, to go work for another club, at least in the Netherlands. I'm not sure if it's only domestic, but I would assume so. So, um, and the way that I approached the whole thing was wrong from the, from the get-go. Uh, because they didn't go through the proper channels, but they basically went to Cruz first. That's what I understood. So of course, there is some bad blood between AZ and Ajax, even though AZ doesn't want to admit it, um, which happened a couple of years ago, also with the corona situation, in which they didn't agree with us being number one in the league table and going to the Champions League. So there's a whole drama behind it. But more importantly, um, it seems allegedly AZ came with some rules. So they said, okay, we want you to sign a contract, let me put it this way, with a couple of rules that we cannot touch each other's, maybe players, uh, staff, etc. for, um, I don't know, 10 years or something. This is all rumors that I heard and re read. I'm not sure it's true. But until that time, Azet is saying it will be March 2024 and not sooner, unless you agree to our conditions and you sign that contract. That's what I understood from it. Am I wrong, guys? Anyone? No, that's that's yeah. that's correct. He was he was at Goeie Morgen Eredivisie, and he did say that Ajax never discussed this with me. He, he, he like he didn't know that he, they wanted Cruz sooner. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know if I have to believe him, but um, according to him, it was never discussed with Az that Ajax wanted him before. Well, that. from what I understand, if 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 Az. If I if I said get a player from Ajax, um, then the whole thing is out, right? No, so they, it, would be, it would be as far as I understood, it's both ways. So it's not only for Ajax, but it would mean also that AZ would not touch Ajax uh, staff or players. That's what then, I'm. Saying. Then how did we sign? Uh, no, 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 we didn't. No, no, it's, it's they want us to sign. We didn't. Uh, Ajax did not. Uh, Agree to it, as far as I know. That was the condition for us to let uh, Screw start sooner. If exactly. we would sign oh, that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I, that's what I didn't understand. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. But you were thinking about Weindel, weren't you? But yes, after. Yeah, we should get the money back for Weindel if they, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All Let's right. We still got the receipt somewhere. Um, yeah, Anthony's saying three million and a ten-year contract. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what we hear. It hasn't been like. I think confirmed, but we don't know. Okay. Um, anyways, guys, uh, it's been very long. Thank you so much for your patience. Maybe the longest live stream we've had. Damien, uh, thank Mind you. Damien. Gary, thank you. Puppy, Always, thank you, mate. Welcome, buddy. Although you're very emotional, I hope you enjoyed this stream today. Extremely emotional. Always. The therapy session is always fun with you guys. Don't worry. All right. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, let's hope for the best international break. Uh, go do something nice for yourself. Try to forget about ice a little bit. And then next week we start again and we start looking at the games that we have to deal with. And maybe by then things have changed. You never know. You know, maybe we don't have Stan anymore as a coach. Who knows? Um, Damien, hope to see you back soon now. I'll be there. Thank Cheers, you very much, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.